me smart at a feed. I don't know if low exar. Be not a share your beat, saying, Ya may me no hot ya nahaleni. Nahar she ye shovev. Ya nahaini of a maglet sadak lama anshamo. Come, Kirele, who begets all maravets. Lo irara ki atai maradi. Shift the chaum ishan tacha, hemayena chamuni. Taroch lefanai shulchan. Neged Tzurirai Tishanta vashemen roshi Kosiri vaya Ach tova chesed yur difuni Koya mechayai Vishabeti Bivet Adonai Friends, I've chanted for you the Hebrew words of our 23rd Psalm, a psalm that reminds us that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. God makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. God restores my soul. God guides me in straight path for the sake of his name. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. God's rod and staff, they comfort me. God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And God has anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember her. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember her. In the opening buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember her. In the blueness of sky and in the warmth of summer, we will remember her. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember her. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember her. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember her. And when we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember her. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember her. So long as we live, she too will live, for she is now a part of us as we remember Sophia Mamulov. To you, Ilya, and to your father, her son-in-law, Igor, who could not be with us, and to the members of the family and friends. We've come together to remember, but also to celebrate this life, this beautiful life of your beloved Sophia. Our sages in their wisdom taught us that birth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and from youth to age from innocence to awareness, from ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness, and often back again, from health to sickness, and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, from grief to understanding, 
from fear to faith. From defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. Sophia's journey of 94 years began on December 16, 1925 in Ukraine. She was one of two children born to Grigory and Rachel Kvetcher. Prior to World War II, the family lived in Venista, and during the war they were evacuated to mainland Russia. Sophia's older brother, Shulam, he went to fight with the Red Army when he was just 19 years old. And tragically, he was never heard from again. Ultimately, he was assumed dead. In Russia, Sophia attended school and went on to study to become a dental assistant. And while studying the skill, she met Boris Mamulov. Boris was a dentist. And they courted, they fell in love and married, and eventually in 1948 they welcomed their only child, their daughter Isabella. Sophia was a working mom, and although she worked, she thoroughly enjoyed motherhood. Many years later, in 1978, Isabella and her husband Igor and their little boy Ilya they left Russia. Sophia and Boris came to America, specifically to Cleveland, three years later in 1981. Ilya, you shared with me that your grandfather Boris had suffered back in Russia with Parkinson's disease. And when he and your grandmother, Babushka, came to Cleveland, you remember that she was his primary caregiver. She took great care of her husband, your grandfather, but sadly, just three years after arriving in America, your grandfather Boris succumbed to this disease and he died. Your grandmother found the strength to go on. And so, living at the Warnsville Center apartment complex, she managed to move forward in life by making a lot of friends. A lot of other Russian Jewish families lived there. She made so many new friends and became so popular she grew to be known as the person in charge of the complex's social activities. Whatever it was, Ilya, Babushka organized uh, the bingo and the field trips, and whatever fun was er and entertaining, it seemed that Babushka was in charge. Organizing these events with her personality, which you, Ilya, described as bubbly, it seems that people adored her. She was quite popular. She would tell you that people would call her all the time with stories and gossip and rumors. You know, it seems to me that your grandmother was kind of the unofficial mayor of the entire apartment complex. Ilya, your years growing up in Cleveland, you remember special times with your grandmother? Simple but fun moments, like playing card games together, going for walks and meeting up with her friends just so she could show you off to them. You said she was a good cook, especially when she made you the special ravioli you like so much. And the two of you would enjoy sitting together and watching TV. When you were 11 years old, your mother's career provided an opportunity for the family. And so you all moved, you and your mom and dad, to New Jersey. You left Cleveland, and while this move must have been sad for Babushka, she understood. During your early teen years, whenever your parents would go on vacation, or maybe when they needed a break from teenage Ilya, you would go to Cleveland and spend quality time with Babushka. Ilya, 1996 was a difficult and devastating year for your family. Your mom, Isabella, became ill. Your grandmother, Sophia, came to New Jersey to try and 
help to care for her daughter. But sadly, at the very young age of 48 years old, your mom, Isabella, died. And this was a horrible tragedy for you and for your father. And how can we possibly imagine what this must have done to Sophia? After Isabella's passing, Sophia returned to Cleveland. But you noted when we spoke, Ilya, you said she was never quite the same after that horrible loss. She became disinterested in socializing. She wasn't really up to meeting with friends. But she did find some comfort, as you described to me, in watching more and more television. She was especially obsessed, a little bit addicted to Telemundo. She'd watch these Spanish soap operas, which were dubbed into Russian. It brought her some source of enjoyment and comfort. Ilya, you always knew that Babushka loved you so much. Even during that period of time, approximately 10 years when you were living in England, you and, gran you and your grandmother worked to keep your relationship close and loving. Three years ago, Sophia moved into Menorah Park as she needed additional assistance. There were health issues. There were memory issues. But she remained a kind and sweet woman. And I know, Ilya, that not only are you grateful for the relationship you had with her, for the love you shared with her, but I know that on this day, especially these last few years leading up to this moment, I know you feel a lot of gratitude in your heart to your Aunt Emma, your cousin Marina, for all the visits that they made and all these visits that brought her so much comfort. Today, friends, we find the strength as we join with the sages of our people as we declare these words, Zichrona Livracha. We pray that the memory of Sophia Mamulov and the good deeds that she performed here in the land of the living, we pray that these will always be our blessing. And to this we can say, Amen. As we know, words which come from our heart enter directly to the heart. And Marina, I know you have some words in your heart that you'd like to express. So, Sophia was not my blood relative, but we are a very small family. Um, she remained in Cleveland, um, and my mother and I always felt responsible as if she was ours, and she was one of us. Um, when uh, Bella passed away, uh, she put a lot of pictures of Bella in her apartment. I felt it was like a little chapel. She basically turned her apartment into a chapel. There were pictures of Bella everywhere. Uh, and uh, when she moved to Menorah Park, um, we made sure that a couple pictures that she liked the most um, went with her. She um, always looked at them um, and always remembered her. So she'll be able to join her daughter now. And uh, I think that's what she wanted. So it's sad, but I'm happy that she'll be with her now. Thank you, Marina. And it's true that we pray that when our beloved leave this earth, we pray that their souls will be reunited. And as you said, for her soul to be reunited with her daughter, with Boris, perhaps her parents, and I pray even with her brother, who she lost so many years ago. I pray that this, this hope will bring you and Ilya and the entire family comfort. At this time, I invite you to please rise for the memorial prayer, El Mole Rachamim, as we ask God to accept Sophia's soul.
אל מלא רחמים שוכן במרומים. המסה מנוחה נכונה תחת כנפי השכינה, במלות קדושים ותורים כזוכר הרקיע מסעירים. את נשמת סופיה, בת גריגורי ורחל, שהלכה לעולמה בגן עדן תהא מנוחתה. ענה בך רחמים אסתירך וסתר כנפיך לרמים, ותצרר ויצרר החיים את נשמתה. אדוני הוא נחלתה ותנוח בשלום, על משכבה ונאמר אמן. O merciful God who dwells on high, who is full of compassion, grant perfect rest beneath the shelter of your divine presence among the holy and pure, who shine as the brightness of the firmament. To our dear departed, Sophia Mamulov, who has now gone to her, her eternal home, may Sophia's soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life. Grant that her memory inspire all of us to noble and consecrated living. And to this we say, Amen. Friends, our service will continue next at the Zion Memorial Cemetery, where we will join together for the rites of burial. Thank you. <laughs>